This video is brought to you by Alienware, featuring Intel Core i7 processors. Start gaming. Today, Through the Ages takes us to a weapon that's so heavily integrated into the Battlefield series, it's featured in almost every single title. So it's a fan favourite for sure, and a weapon that likely sits even in non-gamers' minds as one of the most iconic ever produced. Today, it's time to take a closer look at the M1911. Gameplay today is coming via my brand new Alienware X51 gaming PC, which Alienware sponsored to me. I'm working on the review at the moment, I've done about half of the recording that I need to do, and that'll be out soon, probably sometime next week. But if you want to check it out in the meantime, there's a link to their product page in the description. So, back to it then. The M1911 has been present in the following Battlefield titles. 1942, Vietnam, 1943, Bad Company 2 and a separate appearance in the Vietnam expansion, Battlefield Play for Free, Battlefield 3, 4 and Battlefield Hardline. In 1942, the weapon featured as the standard sidearm for the Allied forces and this set the tone for many future titles in the franchise. And of course we start our coverage with Bad Company 2, where the weapon featured in the base game and the Vietnam expansion. In the base game, the weapon came unlocked on startup if you'd purchased the limited edition, or if you bought the normal edition, it was unlocked at rank 3. As the 1911 uses the 45 ACP round, it was given a fairly high damage model in this game, offering a max damage of 33.4 at close range, making it extremely powerful. The firing sound was pretty baller as well. It was like you were punching nails through concrete, so you really felt like you were dealing a lot of damage. Plus, its presence in the game with the wooden handle and the ingrained metal look really made it stand out. Its main competitor was the Rex Revolver, which offered similar damage. It was slightly higher than the 1911, but the 1911 outperforms it everywhere else, which makes it a much more versatile sidearm to be holding onto. It didn't have the rate of fire that some of the other sidearms in the game did, like the M9, but it was likely to finish someone off faster due to that extremely high damage output. In the Vietnam expansion, the weapon performed almost identically to the base game model, but it had a different sound assigned to it, which was supposedly recorded to fit the Vietnam setting. As far as I can tell, using the base game sound would have been just fine. Moving on to Battlefield 3 now, and the 1911 became the veteran weapon for this game, although for me it was an altogether more disappointing experience than it was in Bad Company 2. It did improve in its appeal towards the end of the game's life though, when the assignment called All About Precision unlocked the STAC variant, which was once only a developer version of the weapon featuring both the silencer and the tack light attached at the same time. Previously players could only have one of those attachments. The 1911 here retained its high damage model of 34 max damage at close range and a headshot multiplier capable of downing a player in just two shots, with a headshot dealing 68 damage up close and the second shot only needing to hit the body. Its rate of fire was increased to 333 from 260 rounds a minute in Bad Company 2, which matched well with the extra bullet in the magazine, going from 7 to 8. This change was made because the weapon model in Bad Company 2, the 1911 there, was the original A1 variant, and that changed moving to Battlefield 3. The developers went for the Marine Force M45 variant for this game. For me, that change alone was enough to reduce its presence. The M1911 no longer felt as special as it did in previous titles, not using the classic look. But one unique feature of the 1911 in BF3, perhaps to go with the veteran tagline, was it was the only magazine-fed pistol in the game that featured its own reload animation. All the others shared a different one. 
Switching over to Battlefield 4 now, and again we see a very similar setup to the Battlefield 3 edition, although it has a direct challenger in this game in the form of the Compact 45. While the 45 has a higher amount of bullets per magazine and a better rate of fire, it is far less accurate than a 1911, making it much more of a precision weapon in BF4. Again, it takes a slight visual change moving from the M45 Marine model in Battlefield 3 to the Vickers Tactical Custom model here in Battlefield 4. And an interesting note actually, the weapon model in BF4 and Hardline, the Vickers Tactical Custom, was originally used in Medal of Honor Warfighter, which was created by the Danger Close team, who you now all know as DICE LA. Damage output took an increase from 34 to 36.6 max damage at close range here, again making sure the weapon sat firmly up the pecking order, but it did suffer from a small nerf to the rate of fire, which went down to 310. But, and as is the case with so many other weapons moving from older titles to Battlefield 4, the weapon feels very diluted. There are so many other options that players can choose from that what was once a very coveted weapon in the series now just feels like part of the furniture. It doesn't feel special anymore, and considering it was held in such high stead in previous games, it was the original sidearm that people got to use in 1942 for the Allies, I would have thought more would have been done to make this weapon feel special in Battlefield 4. And now, Battlefield Hardline. The weapon here took a serious dip in usage, not only due to the game not really appealing to the main Battlefield crowd, but also due to Hardline's asymmetrical weapon allocation. The 1911 in this game was only available for use by the law enforcement support class, so a very small subsection would be able to have access to this weapon all of the time. And that just cements the idea in that it doesn't feel like this weapon is very special anymore. It's been a steady decline for the M1911 then. It's clearly an iconic weapon for sure, but one that's been suppressed and blended into the standard weapon arsenal that's available in every game. For me, it should come with a fanfare. It's a weapon from the original titles, and I think it's one that deserves to be highlighted wherever it's featured. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Alienware for sponsoring the video with their X51 PC. As mentioned, I'll be doing a review soon, and you can learn more about the PC by clicking the link in the description right now. Make sure you leave some comments about what weapon should be next on Through the Ages, and while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.